Praise God. Romans chapter 11. I'm going to read verse 28 and verse 29. Romans chapter 11, verse 28 and verse 29. Praise God. The apostle said, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Praise God. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Praise his holy name. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word. Open up our understanding that we might understand the scriptures. We give you praise in this house for all things. You are worthy of glory, dominion, and power belonging unto thee, and it belongeth unto thee alone. You are worthy of all glory, honor, and power. And we thank you forevermore in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Again in verse 28 and 29, coming out of Romans chapter 11, the text says, as concerning the gospel. Now, does anybody know what the gospel is? The word gospel means good news. And before we can really understand why we need the gospel, we must understand that we had some bad news. And the bad news was that the wages of sin is death. But the good news is that the gift of God comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But he said as concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Now we have many gifts in the church as well as a calling of God. And when God gives gifts and callings, he gives them without repentance. So in other words, God does not take back what he has given. Amen. For instance, praise God. When God calls you to salvation, he doesn't repent for that. Amen. Whether one accepts the free gift of salvation or not, God doesn't uh, uh, take that back. Because what he does is make it available for you and for me. Praise God. The Apostle Paul said something like this in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 8 and 9, he said, Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be ye partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now God has called us with a holy calling. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Now understand, it is your decision to answer the call. Come on. Amen. Amen. God never regrets calling us to salvation. He never regrets wooing us by his spirit to the cross that we might find redemption in the blood of his son. Amen. 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 Praise God. Even when God calls a man to preach. Amen. Even though that man may not answer the call. And there 
there are some men who don't answer the call. Hello? Hallelujah. There are some people, praise God, that are called to preach and they fail. They enter into the ministry, get tripped up in sin, and end up dying in that ungodly place. Come on. Even though they failed, God didn't regret calling them. Hello? Because when God calls you, he calls you. But guess what? It is our responsibility to live up to the call. Hello? And this is why God, amen, when he saves an individual, he gives you everything to be successful. Huh? Didn't he tell Joshua chapter 1, I believe verse 7 through 9, he said, only observe to do all that is written in the law. Praise God. Then he said, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, but only observe to do all that is written therein. And if you do so, you shall have good success. Praise God. It's God's will that we have what? Good success. And God will make every Amen. He will make every provision for you and me to be successful in everything he's called us to do. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's just the truth here. He doesn't take it back. Hallelujah. So gifts and callings are without repentance. Come on. Amen. I remember when God called Judas. Huh? Amen. He called Judas Iscariot to the ministry. Now, Jesus said, have not I called you twelve and one of you a devil? But watch this now. Judas was not always a devil. That's what people got to understand. He wasn't always a devil. Jesus was prophesying because he knew what, Jesus, what Judas would do. Huh? But when he called him, praise God, he was not always a devil. Because if he was always a devil, praise God, why would Acts chapter 1 say that Judas fell by his transgression? Come on. Just like Adam fell in the garden. And Lucifer fell from heaven because pride was found in his heart. You understand? These men were in good status in the beginning. Lucifer, the archangel, was in good status from the beginning. But they failed. Come on. Hallelujah. Even the apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let a man think if he stand, take heed, lest he fall. Come on. So you can fall. I mean, you can start out good and end up going down the wrong road. Hello? Now God doesn't regret calling you, but yet we can disappoint him because we failed him in our call. Hello? But you got to remember, God has made every provision for us. He's given us every means to be successful. So we don't have to fall. We can fulfill our call and we can endure to the end and reap the benefit of eternal That's your first calling. I mean, some people say, well, God called me to preach. But before he called you to preach, he called you to get saved first. Come on. People want to dodge around getting saved. And they just want to deal with the aspect that God has called me to preach. Come on. No, God has called you to get saved first. You need to get saved. Hello. Saul of Tarsus had the call of God on his life, but he could never enter into that ministry of being an apostle until after he got saved. Hello? You find that in Acts chapter 9, praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus appeared to the apostle and told him, Amen, I've appeared to thee to make thee a minister. And I'm going to send you to the Gentiles in whom I'm going to deliver you. Amen. And guess what? Before he ever became a minister, he first had to get saved. He first had to get baptized in water upon repentance and get filled with the Holy Ghost, which he did. Then, praise God, he can get in a secret place with the Most High and receive the abundance of revelation and 
Hallelujah. Yes, God has called us to salvation. And there's people he's called to preach. And when I say he's called certain people to preach, I'm talking about men only. Come on. The five-fold ministry is for men only. This ain't no chauvinist club, but this is the divine order of God. Jesus said he gave some apostles and Chapter 4. He gave some apostles. Now that shows that we got a lot of people calling themselves an apostle and they ain't no apostle at all. Just because they carry the title don't mean that they are what they profess and they are. He said he gave some prophets. Everybody ain't no prophet. They may call themselves a prophet. That don't make them a prophet just because they call themselves one. He said he gave some evangelists. Everybody ain't no evangelists. Come on, we got a lot of women evangelists, but I don't see no women evangelists in the Bible, praise God. But the Bible talks about Philip the evangelist. I don't ever hear talking about a woman taking on the title of being an evangelist, praise God. Are you listening to me? He said he gave some pastors. Come on, every pastor has not been called to pastor. They are not called to be a pastor. Come on, somebody. Praise God. You got some pastors. Praise God that ain't even a true shepherd. They don't even care for the flock. All they want is your money, honey. Y'all understand? That's all they want. They want your Abraham Lincoln pennies. They want your nickels and dimes. Your tens, twenties, and fifties. Come on. They call in John chapter 10. Hello? Every pastor is not called to pastor. Come on. So don't get deceived just because you see that title in front of their name. That doesn't make them what they say they are. Come on, because see, God not only calls us, but he proves us. And just because somebody's standing in the office of a pastor don't mean God called them the pastor. Come on, somebody. Some people pastor because they just want to be in control of a church. You better hear me. He said he's given some to be teachers. How many know everybody ain't a teacher? Huh? Everybody not a teacher. He talking about the fivefold ministry. Me and only. We ain't, this ain't no chauvinist club. This is the divine order of God. Are you listening to me? Praise God. So we got to get this right now. Because he ain't called everybody to preach. He ain't called everybody to stand in the fivefold ministry. And if some in the fivefold ministry need to be, amen, put out of the ministry. Because God ain't never called them to the ministry to stand in those offices. He may have called them to salvation, but it don't mean he called them to the government ecclesiastical leadership of the New Testament church. Because we got a lot of preachers messing a lot of people up. Hello? And I don't see that with these men of God in the scripture. I don't see that with them, but I see it today. I see it today from church to church, from denomination to denomination. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Everybody called the preacher, but they don't even know how to get people saved. Come on. Lord Jesus. They don't even know how to get people saved. Don't know how to teach them the right way. Don't know how to rightly divide the scriptures. But God called me to preach. Praise God. Come on. Amen. They're not humble. They don't know how to serve. They ain't faithful to the ministry or nothing. Come on, somebody. Praise God. But God called me to preach. I know some folks that's called to preach, but they running from God. Come on. Hallelujah. They keep running. They're going to find themselves in a pit they can't get out of. And they'll never, amen, get saved. They will never enter into their call and fulfill God's word. 
And God never regrets calling somebody to salvation. He never regrets calling an individual to preach. And as I said before, God has made every provision for us to be successful. So there is absolutely no excuses. Come on. Praise God. And that is the truth. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me get back on this preacher thing. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Let me get back on this preacher thing. <laughs> we got a lot of preachers, right? <laughs> Come on. They can sing. I heard some preachers that can sing. <laughs> I mean, they can sing. Praise God. I know some preachers that can sing. God has gifted them to sing. <laughs> and I've seen some preachers, praise God, <laughs> that can preach. You understand? I mean, they could preach, praise God. Now watch this. Just because I said they can sing and they can preach, that don't mean they are anointed. Come on. That does not mean they are anointed just because they can sing. Praise God. I can go into the world and show you some people that can sing. Come on. You think just because they ain't in the church, they can't sing. Come on. Break. 
Jesus. And he said, Pastor, I've been playing here for a long time. I played for other churches. He said, but guess what? I ain't never got saved. He said, today is a new day. I want to get saved. That means something. Most of them people ain't even getting delivered. They're just acting out of their emotions. And then we leave the church and we say, well, we have some church today. But guess what? Did nobody get delivered? Come on, yokes wasn't destroyed. Devils wasn't cast out. People still go back to their boyfriend, or girlfriend. They go back to drinking. They go back to the clubs. They go back to doing whatever they were doing. You know why? Because they didn't want it no way. Come on, they were just in there because a Spirit, praise God. Do you understand? Now, when I look at the musicians today, most of them, not all, because God do have some anointed musicians. Come on, they love God. They live for God. They have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They ain't shucking and jiving. They submit to leadership. Come on, praise God. He do got some musicians like that in this hour. Now, when I go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, I see David playing his instrument. Bible said King Saul called for him because the anointing of God had left him. See, God had rejected him because he continually rejected the commandment of God. God took the kingdom from him and said, I'm going to give it to your neighbor that is better than you. Praise God. And the Bible said, He was vexed in spirit. He was vexed in his mind. Come on, he couldn't get no rest. Praise God. He said, I want you to call for a minstrel to come and play. And he wasn't calling for anybody. He was calling for David. David was anointed. Come on. The Bible says when David began to play his harp before King Saul, who had an unclean spirit, it cast out the devil just through the music. Come on, he wasn't just playing chords. Come on, he was anointed. Come on, it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Praise God. It is the power of God that casts out devils. Come on. Hallelujah. See, in the church of today, a lot of the musicians today are homosexuals. Drunkards, liars. Hello. Amen. How they gonna cast out the devil when they got the devil? Come on. Hallelujah. I know that makes sense. I know that makes sense. How you gonna cast out the devil when you got the devil? The seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out the devil and they couldn't do it. Praise God. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. on a lot of our musicians in the church. Come on. There's a spirit of perversion because something is wrong when the music is not anointed. Something is wrong when the singers ain't anointed. Something is wrong. So we ain't trying to be anointed. We trying to ride on our talent. We trying to ride on our gift. But guess what? Your gift and your talent ain't the anointed. Your gift and your talent that come from God got to be anointed thereafter. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why you see a lot of people doing what they do in the church. And after they perform, they go back to the world of sin. 
They go back to fussing and cussing, lying and stinking up the place. But yet, amen, they're trying to fool you that they all up in God when they stand before the people to perform. They're not worshiping. They're not praising God. They're performing. Hmm? It's a performance. Huh? Come on. You got singers trying to compete with one another. You got certain singers, they won't even sing the whole song. They won't sing the whole song if they don't lead it. They miss parts in everything. Some of them lip sync. Come on. Some of them half sing the background chorus. Hallelujah. But when they lead the song, come on, they want everybody to get with it. Come on. They sing every, come on, every uh, note, every line, every word when they lead it. See, that's a performance. That's pride. That ain't to the glory of God. Are you listening to me? <laughs> some of y'all shouting, but you guilty, praise God, because Jesus said in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. 
Listen to what he said. Praise God. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. After Jesus had came out of the wilderness of temptation. Huh? Amen. The Bible says he came out in the power of the Spirit. Did you see that? Amen. He went into the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost. And there he was tempted of the devil. And the Bible says that after he had overcame every temptation, he was just not, he was just not only full of the Holy Ghost, but he was now in the power of the Holy Ghost. Now he can operate. Now you can operate in the anointing. Praise God. Now the scripture says, watch this, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. After Jesus had come out of the wilderness of temptation, being tempted of the devil, listen to what he says. He said, the spirit of the Lord is what? Is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. You see that? This is the gospel in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Now remember he just came out of the wilderness being tempted of the devil. He was already full of the Holy Ghost when he went in there. Amen. And by the power of God, through the spirit and the word, he overcame every temptation. Amen. And now the Bible says he came out in the power of the spirit. Did he begin to proclaim in verse 18 again? The spirit He sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Did you see that? Amen. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Look at that. Huh? Amen. And some people say, because, you know, they feel, they feeling it today. You know, the spirit of God is on us. People, that ain't the truth. The Spirit of God is not on you because you're feeling it. Come on. See, under the new covenant, you have to have the Holy Ghost, which is evidenced by speaking in tongues. And of course, as you go on to walk with God, the fruit of the Spirit begins to manifest and bloom on your tree. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you got to have it just like this. You can't have it another way. The Bible don't let preach one way. And we got to have God. And see, some people will never be anointed because they don't see God. They don't seek Him. They don't search for Him with all of their heart. They don't look for Him because they don't hunger or thirst after Him. Come on. And that's been one of the tricks of the devil to keep you preoccupied from getting before God so you can get what you need from Him. You understand? Keep your life busy with all these other things, all these other meaningless things, all these rubber things, all these fleshly things. He's keeping you distracted so you can't get that Holy Ghost. Because he knows you get the Holy Ghost, you become a threat to the devil's kingdom. But until then, you ain't nothing but a pawn that he uses for his own purpose. so hard. He don't want them to get that Holy Ghost. He don't want them to get anointed because he know that is the power of God that can oppose him. That is the power of God that can cast him out. That is the power of God that can pull down his stronghold. Come on somebody. See he knows that. That's why he fights us so hard. Make you dream of all these other things. Come on, he tried it with Jesus Christ, didn't he? Yeah. Showed him all the glory of the kingdoms of the world in the moments of time. He said, if you bow down and worship me, all these things shall be yours. See, this is what he's done to many today. Praise God, he showed you a vision. You might not even know he was showing it to you. But what he's doing, he distracted you. Praise God. He's trying to keep you from the Messiah. Yahshua. 
you can sing a wonderful song and the words of the song is anointed. It doesn't make you anointed if you ain't never had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See? Not only must, not only is the word already anointed, but the one that's handling the word must be anointed. Come on. I'm trying to show you something. The Bible says he cast out devils with his word and healed all that word shit. Huh? You know why Jesus was able to do those things? Because he was anointed. But watch this. You got to understand. Even though a, a, a person is anointed, they still have to overcome the flesh, the devil, and this world in your personal life. That's why when the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, he was full of the Holy Ghost. But then he had to face three challenges. He battled the, flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. He battled the flesh, he battled the devil, and he battled the world. Yes. See, those are the three. You're going to have to always deal with it, but you have to overcome them. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus overcame them and the Bible says he came out of the wilderness in the power. Now he was ready to operate. Now he was ready to preach. Now he was ready to cast out devils. Now he was ready to heal the sick. to tell lies 
lies that sound like something true. Huh? You got to watch out when the devil uses people to flatter you with lies, things that ain't even true. Huh? But because that flesh wants to hear those things that ain't true, then we find ourselves in a place where it's hard to get, get out of. And Acts chapter 20, praise God. How many believe the word in here? Yes. Amen. How many know the word is truth? Yeah. He said, it's sanctified through thy, thy truth. The what? Word. His word is what? Truth. truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all getting anything? Yeah. Is this making sense to you? Yeah. I want this to make sense. Now, I told you Acts 20 is actually Acts 19. Praise God. Let's read that. Amen. Acts 19. Let's read that. Praise God. Beginning at verse 13, it says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, and an exorcist is supposed to be one who cast out devils. But the Bible says there were certain vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. See that? So in other words, these men attempted to cast out some devils by using the name that they was hearing the Apostle Paul preaching. Huh? Yeah. Now understand that these men were not saved. Huh? Yeah. They were not saved. They had no relationship with God. They were not anointed with the Holy Ghost. They didn't have a prayer or a fasted life. You understand? Yeah. Amen. They just thought it was a to see somebody doing the things that they were doing. And they thought all we got to do is just use the name that he used and we'll see the same results. Understand these men were not anointed at all. Praise God. Then he says in verse 14, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Hello? Why did the evil spirit say, Paul I know, and Jesus I know? Well, we just showed you one verse in Matthew chapter 8. The Bible said Jesus cast out the spirits with his word. Not only that, Luke chapter 4 teaches us how Jesus overcame Satan in the wilderness of temptation. Come on. See, they knew who Jesus was because Jesus had overcome them in battle. Come on. So they knew him. Huh? Hallelujah. The apostle Paul cast out devils. You can go to, what's that? Acts chapter, what's that? Acts chapter 16 where he cast out a demon out of the young girl with God. They were not anointed. They were not men who prayed and fasted. Amen. And got a hold to the one on heaven's throne. Amen. They were no threat to the enemy. And the scripture says in verse 16, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. See that? You don't play with the devil. Amen. Come on. Amen. You got to get anointed. Come on. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, you have access to the armor. When you go to war against the enemy, you got to be clothed in battle. You got to
to be clothed during that time of warfare. Come on, because the enemy going to hit you. He going to punch you. He going to kick you. He going to throw rocks at you. He going to swing knives. He going to swing swords at you. Throw knives at you. He going to fight you to the toenail until he has destroyed you. And the only thing that can withstand the attacks of the enemy is the whole armor of God. That's why you got to have the Holy Ghost. That's why you got to have a prayer life. Because you can't resist the enemy in your flesh. That's why the devil don't want people to get the Holy Ghost. Because that's when you become a threat. Huh? That's why many are no threat. Some of them mean good. They're very sincere, but they just ain't been taught right. They ain't been taught right. So therefore, amen. That's why the devil wants to keep people believing the lies that they believe. Come on. You don't figure this thing out. It's already been laid out. Come on. Am I making sense? Amen. Praise God. Now, watch this now. Amen. When one receives the gift of the Holy Ghost, they have power to what? Cast out devils, right? Amen. The Holy Ghost will also dispense particular spiritual gifts.